Good afternoon and welcome to a very sunny Montreal in Canada. Now, last time out, uh, Rocket Williams Racing recorded the fastest pit stop of the race in Monaco, equaling the fastest of the season so far with a 2.07 seconds. So we thought it was a good opportunity to just sort of show you a little bit what goes on behind the scenes and explain a Formula One pit stop. So a Formula One pit stop consists of about 26 people doing 34 movements in ideally less than two seconds. Williams hold the world record for the fastest ever race pit stop with a 1.92 seconds, which was in Baku in 2016. So we're pretty proud of our pit stop form. There's a number of key roles, obviously, that go on in a pit stop. Um, some which you're obviously used to seeing, some that you probably haven't really noticed or can't see too much what, what the reason for them is. You obviously have your front and rear jack. We always have a spare front jack man um, and rear jack man as well. So if anything goes wrong, there's somebody on hand who can just jump straight in. You have three people on each of the corners. So you've got your gunman, you have one of the guys doing wheel off and one doing wheel on. The three of them have to work in unison because they need to know exactly um, how each other operate, the, all the little movements that go into, into a corner to get that wheel off in the quickest amount of time. And the three guys will train together at the factory, they'll train together here, so they get to know each other pretty well. And the gunman has quite a lot of responsibility, so he has to make sure, ultimately, that that corner is secure. Um, they do that through sort of three ways. There's the vision, there's the feel, and there's the sound. So they will take those three things into account in terms of determining when the wheel is off and ready to be pulled off the car, and when the wheel is on and secure, and they can give the green light. The fourth, um, the fourth corner will be the one that gives the green light to say that the car is ready to go. But then you also have two other roles. So you have a controller who you can see sort of at the back of the car, um, who is responsible for overseeing the pit stop and making sure that the car is safe and that he's happy that all four corners are on. And then you also have a traffic man who is looking down the pit lane the whole time to make sure that we don't release the car into traffic. And any of those people can stop the car being released if they need to. So either side of the car, you have two car steady men. Now, the role's actually pretty important because the car's only lifted slightly off the ground. So if it does start to pivot slightly, it can really, really slow down the pit stop. And because it is so low, you really do need to make sure that they're also pushing on it equally so that one of them doesn't tilt the car over. So it's, it's quite a fine art for them to actually work in unison to make sure the car stays exactly where it needs to be for the quickest pit stop. If you also have a look at the front of the car, you can see the front wing adjust guys and you also have a rear wing clean. Both of those again really important, the front wing adjust, sometimes it's quite late calls when they come into the pit stop so they really have to be on the ball to, to know what that number is so that they don't get it wrong, which is particularly important in the wet because you really do need to get those changes correct. And the rear wing as well, you know, it does collect debris during the uh, races which can affect the performance so again really really important to make sure that they keep the car and the rear wing as clean as they can so depending on which side of the car you are the nuts actually do up in a different way so it's not as easy as just going righty tighty lefty loosey it depends if you're on the right hand side of the car or the left hand side of the car as to which way you want to be doing that nut whether you're trying to get the wheel on or off and the gunmen practice for hours and hours to make sure that they get it exactly right they know exactly what they're doing and through feel vision and sound they can tell exactly when that nut is off and the wheel is ready to come off and when it is safe to go and release the car um, back out onto the racetrack. So in terms of practice these guys really do have a tough job all year. They do about 70 practice pit stops over a race weekend. If they're back at the factory they do about 60 a day. In pre-season testing this year we did between 500 and 1000 which is a combination of full pit stop like you, you're seeing here um, and also we have a rig room so each of the four corners can practice individually so that those three guys can really sort of hone their individual actions and really sort of speed up so that when they do go into the full crew they're as fast as they possibly can be. So over the course of a season you're probably looking at about 2,000 pit stops that these guys are doing so it's no wonder that they have to be pretty fit. There's also the element of obviously making sure that the driver is in the box in exactly the right place. You can see even though it's at low speed, when the car's hurtling down the pit lane at 80 kilometers an hour, it's having to stop less than a foot from where these guys are pretty much kneeling in front of it. So the guys do need to be really, really precise. And if the driver doesn't quite get it right, it again can really affect the time of the pit stop. So it's really important that the driver and every single person in that pit crew is working together in unison to make sure that that pit stop is the fastest it can be and hopefully less than two seconds. So that's the end of pit stop practice and we can now throw to Adam who's talking to our chief mechanic, Mark Pattinson.
Thanks, Oaf. I'm here with Mark Pattinson, who's Chief Mechanic here at Rocket Williams Racing. So, Mark, we've um, obviously taken a look at pit stop practice today. Just explain what your role is in the pit stop and why that's so important for the team. Um, my overall role is to uh, generally choose the individuals for each corner, jacks. And I, um, I do this by, I get to know the guys, I know their strengths and weaknesses. Um, you know, it's not just about their body strength. If, if something goes wrong, it's how they, they deal with the problem when it goes wrong. So um, each role is individually looked at for, for every team member. Um, my ultimate role as chief mechanic is to release the car when, when I see that it's safe and all four wheels are on, hopefully tight. So you talked about that process of finding the right individual for each role. Just run me through how that actually works from the start of the season in pre-season and then into the first races and beyond so that you know that you've got the best team for each pit stop. I think first of all, we, um, we uh, send out an email to the guys and, and ask them if there's any roles within the stop they would like to try for. And then from that, we, um, we start the process of going in our rig room and... Um, evaluating these guys in the positions that they want to try for and um, we gather the data look at the videos coach them they go training if they need you know to build up their strength for a certain role and then we decide we start to then uh, decide to whether we choose them for that role or or we go back to what we know where we're strong um, and we then just keep coaching these guys so that we've got cover um, should anyone need to miss a race for whatever reason or get injured at, at the track. And how proud does it make you feel as chief mechanic when you record the fastest pit stop of the race and equally the 1.92 second, the fastest pit stop of all time in the sport? You know, what satisfaction does that give you and your team? Enormous satisfaction. Um, we work as a team very hard for this and, and I work tirelessly behind the scenes at the factory at home going through the videos looking for every little error that we make and how we can improve that you know we're we're doing fantastic stops and it's hard to you know we're not looking for half a second we're looking for hundreds and uh you know you have to go to these individuals the guys and just say you know your foot's wrong there or you, you know you're at the wrong height it's it's very small things to um, to address, which is which is great from my side. But I'm always I'm always looking for those little hundreds to uh, to improve the stops. Excellent stuff. And we'll hand back over to Sophie now, who's speaking to some of the mechanics. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, I'm over here with Jack Hudless, who is Georgia's number one mechanic, and his corner from the pit crew, uh, Alex and Jack. Can you just tell us quickly what your role is in the pit stop? Hi Sophie, yeah, I do the gun on the front right corner. I'm a front right wheel off, and I put the front right wheel on. So you three obviously have to work together pretty closely. How much practice have you done and how important is it that you know exactly what each other's gonna do in that two second moment, or less than two seconds? Yeah, it's, it's really important that we, we do a lot of practice together. We've probably done a thousand stops now, just this year, but we're the newest, newest corner on the pit crew this year. Yep. So, uh, yeah, a lot of pressure on us. We've done a lot of training and a lot we of bonding. Last week. We were the fastest last week. So, last pretty week. good corner. So, is that down to just practice? Is there anything that you guys do differently? Do all four corners do exactly the same thing? Or do you actually have maybe like little techniques that you both all do? All four corners are very similar. Um, but, yeah, they're similar, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the core basics of a pit stop are exactly the same. We're there to change the wheel. Uh, but we found that over the, the course of this year, we've, we've just changed little things here and there. We've got our own little style, our own little traditions that we like to do uh, going into the pit stop. And yeah, I think we're just refining it. Uh, every race, we, we refine it, we get quicker and quicker. And when we're back at the factory, we, we practice a little bit more, try something new. Do you agree with that, Alex? Yeah, I think we've all got our little techniques. Everyone does it slightly differently, but I think for the most part, they're all the same. It's just uh, what works for you, I suppose. Every, every, every stop, you find something else that makes you go quicker and you just progress. 
And between the four corners, is there a bit of competition as to who's going to be the quickest? Absolutely Always. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the quickest that you've actually done it in this uh, year, either in practice? 1.43 last weekend in, in our, on our corner. That was in the race? In the race, in Monaco. Mm. But practice at the factory, we did a... 1.17? 1.17 seconds. That's pretty quick. So that's really what we're aiming for in the races then? Yeah, no pressure. There's a bit less pressure <laughs> at say, the factory. Well, it's 2.07 that you've got to beat, so eh, not too far to go. But you can do it this weekend. There's a couple yeah. of tenths in it. I reckon a 1.8. Cool. Right, well, thank you very much for catching up. We'll let you, you go back to uh, whatever it is you need to do now. Thank you, bye. Thanks. So we hope you found that interesting, and thanks for joining us here in Canada, and hopefully we've given you a few things to look out for in the race this weekend.